In the next two lessons, we're going to have a look at trigonometric equations. And for today, we're going to start off revising everything you've learned in grade 10 and 11. When we give you a trig equation and we ask you to solve theta, we want you to determine the specific values that we can substitute into the angle theta's place. That will give us the ratio that was given. Because we know that a trig function can repeat itself, there will be more than one angle size that will give us the same ratio. Once the given equation is in the specific standard form, a trig function with an angle equal to a constant ratio, we have a few steps that we can follow. Our first step is to calculate the reference angle. This we do using our calculator. So to calculate the reference angle, we will say shift, then our specific trig function that was given, and then the ratio that was given. Here it is very important to realize that the reference angle is an acute angle in the first quadrant that will give us that specific ratio. Therefore, we will always ignore the sign of the ratio here because we want the value in the first quadrant. Once we have our reference angle, our second step is to determine in which quadrants we are working. And for that, we are going to use the sign of the constant ratio. And that will tell us whether we are working in the quadrants where this trig function is positive or negative. Next up, we will add the correct reduction formula for each of the quadrants we are working in. And in those reduction formulas, the acute angle will now be our reference angle that we've calculated. And then all that's left to do is to simplify. Let's now have a look at how we can use these four steps in a basic trig equation. In example one, we are asked to solve theta for the equation tan three theta is equal to minus two comma five. So here we already have it in the correct standard form. We have a trig function, an angle three theta and a constant ratio on the right. So I can immediately start off with my first step, which is to calculate the reference angle. So to calculate my reference angle, I'm going to say shift and then this time the trig function tan of my trig ratio without the minus, so of 2,5. And that will give me a reference angle of 68,20 degrees. Now I can move on to step two, which is to decide in which quadrants to work. And because I now have tan, but a negative ratio, I'm going to work in the quadrants where tan is negative, which is the second and the fourth quadrant. So step number three is then to add the correct reduction formula for each quadrant along with my reference angle. So when I want to calculate the angle, which is three theta in this case, in my second quadrant, my reduction formula will be 180 degrees minus my reference angle, which is 68,2. And in my fourth quadrant, to calculate the angle of 3 theta, my reduction formula is 360 degrees minus my reference angle. And now, because we know that these quadrants will repeat themselves every 360 degrees, we need to add that we can add any amount of 360 degrees to get another possible answer for both these quadrants. And then, very important, we need to add that k is an element of integers, meaning that we can only add full 360 degrees to get another option. Step four is then to simplify. And here it's important to remember your basics of algebra, that when you divide in an equation, you need to divide every single term by that value. So in our case, we are dividing by 3. So we're going to divide the 111 by 3. But we are also going to divide the term of k times 360 by 3. These are now my two general solutions for this specific trig equation. And now we can go further and add a specific interval and ask you to get the values in that specific interval. So to do that, we're going to start off substituting our k value with zero, and then we'll have the two answers 37,27 and 97,27. 
we can now go further and change the k value to 1, meaning we will add 1 times 120 degrees, and then we'll get a second group of possible answers, which are still in my interval. And if we then add 2 times 120, so we change k to 2, we will have another set of answers that are still in my interval. When I now start adding 3 times 120 degrees by making k3, I will have answers that are outside the given interval. That means that these six answers are the specific answers for the given interval. In example 1, we had the trig function and angle alone equal to a constant ratio, like in our standard form, so we could immediately start with our four steps. This will not always happen. And sometimes you will need a bit of manipulation to get to that standard form. I'm going to remind you of the three different methods that you learned in grade 11. The first method is used when you have sin and cos of the same angle. When this happens, we're going to use our tan theta identity. So we're going to divide both sides by cos theta and change it to tan theta is equal to b over a. Let's have a look. In example 2, I'm going to start off by moving the minus 2 sin theta to the right by adding it. And now I have it in the form sin theta is equal to cos theta. So as I mentioned, your next step will then be to divide both sides by cos theta. Because as long as I do it on both sides, it is acceptable. And now I can simplify on the left, cos theta divided by itself is 1, and I'm left with 3. And on the right, sin theta divided by cos theta is tan theta, so I have 2 tan theta. And now I need to get my tan theta on its own, so I'm going to divide by 2 and have 3 over 2 as my ratio. So now we have it in the standard form, so we can start with our four steps that will always stay the same from here on. So my first step is to get my reference angle. And this I will do using my calculator, and I will get 56,31 degrees. My second step is then to determine the quadrants, and I'm looking at a tan ratio that is positive. So I'm going to be working in the first and the third quadrants where tan is positive. So my third step is then to add the correct reduction formulas. Now for my first quadrant, there is no reduction formula, so theta is simply my reference angle. And then I need to add k times 360 again. And for my third quadrant, the reduction formula is 180 degrees plus that reference angle. And once again, I'm adding my k times 360 degrees. And I need to mention that k should be an integer. And lastly, I need to simplify. My first quadrant is already simplified. So I'm going to simplify the third quadrant by adding. And then I will get 236,31 degrees plus k times 360. Here we did not receive a specific interval, so we're going to stop at our two general solutions. In example 3, we now once again have cos theta and sin theta, but this time we have sin squared theta and we have three terms. So our previous method will not work. In this case, because we have three terms, we are going to factorize. When you factorize, it might be that you need to do a biggest common factor, or difference between squares, or in this case, trinomial. For a trinomial, three terms need to be in a specific order, and that order is ax squared plus bx plus c, where x squared and x will now be trig functions. So in our case, we have cos theta and sin squared theta, but these two have to be the same trig function. This means I will have to manipulate a bit so that I can get it into my correct standard form, and that manipulation will be done using identities. So when I start off with question 3, I'm going to start by changing sin squared theta to 
to 1 minus cos squared theta, which is an old grade 10 identity. Now I'm going to simplify and then take all the terms to one side so that I have my standard form for my trinomial. Now I can factorize and then I can split it up into two separate equations. The first one for my left hand bracket will be cos theta is equal to 2 over 3. And for my second bracket, cos theta will be equal to minus 1. And now you'll realize that we now have two equations that are in the standard form a trig function and an angle equal to a constant ratio. So I'm going to follow the four standard steps twice. So for both equations, I'm going to get the reference angle and go right through my steps until I've simplified. In example four, we once again have sin and cos, but this time with totally different angles. One angle being theta plus 30, and the other angle being 2 times theta. So here we're going to make use of our third method, and that method is for when we have the same trig function on both sides. In example 4, however, we don't have the same trig function on both sides yet, so we're going to have to start by manipulating them into the same trig function. And for sin and cos, we know they are co-functions, so I'm going to keep the left hand side as cos of theta plus 30, but on the right hand side I want to rewrite that as cos as well, and that means I will have to say 90 minus 2 theta. The reason for this is that my original angle and my new angle should add up to 90. And now I have an equation where I have the same trig function on both sides. And from here on, it's going to be an abstract calculation. So we are still going to follow our four steps, but now with abstract values. The first step is to calculate the reference angle. This is usually done by using your calculator, but in our abstract question, the angle on the right simply becomes my reference angle. So my reference angle is 90 degrees minus 2 theta. My second step is to determine the quadrants, and we are clearly working where cos is positive, so that will be my first and my fourth quadrant. My third step is then always to add the correct reduction formulas. So here the angle that I'm going to calculate is theta plus 30 degrees, and for my first quadrant I don't use a reduction formula. So this angle is simply equal to my reference angle plus k times 360 degrees. For my fourth quadrant, I'm still going to calculate the angle theta plus 30 degrees, but now adding my correct reduction formula will be 360 degrees minus my reference angle of 90 minus 2 theta. And here it is very important to write that in a bracket so that you don't make sign mistakes. Now I still need to add k times 360 degrees and k should be an integer. And now I'm going to my fourth step which is to simplify. When I simplify I'm going to add up all the thetas to get 3 theta and I'm going to subtract the 30 on the right hand side. And then I still need to divide by 3, so theta is 20 degrees plus k times 120 for my first quadrant. For my fourth quadrant, I'm going to have minus theta is equal to 240 degrees plus k times 360. And now I need to divide by minus to get minus 240 degrees minus k times 360. And here I have my two general solutions. So today we very quickly recapped the basic trig equation and then the three different methods for manipulation of trig equations. If you need some more practice on this, you can always go back to the grade 11 videos on these topics.